Okay, folks, today today is a big day. Um, we're going to talk about things today that you're going to take with you the rest of the time you program with Unreal and probably the rest of the time you program in general. These are very, very important core concepts uh, to programming. You have to know these. Uh, we're going to take it slow, uh, but everything from here on out is going to be built off of most of these principles. Now, as you look at my sc screen, you're going to see a bunch of extra folders and stuff. Don't worry about that. That's just a setting I had. I was messing with uh, C++ coding and stuff like that, but it's no big deal. So today, of course, we're going to integrate replication into everything we do, but we're going to be doing a pickup, uh, like, a, like a weapon or something like that. And while doing that... We're going to be creating classes and uh, children of those classes. So inheritance is going to be an important concept we go over, as well as casting. And in Unreal, that can be a really abstract thing because it really has two parts. It's, it's casting to access variables and blueprints, but it's also specifying the object node, which, which you're going to soon see. So let me just get right into it. First thing we have to do is add a weapons pack into our project now. This is free, so relax. Don't worry about it. Um, it's in the marketplace already. So go ahead and bring up the marketplace. Oh, another thing is my project might be named different than the tutorial 1A, I think is what I started on. Now it's just uh, tutorial 1, and I have a bunch of different variations. So don't worry about my project name. Go to whatever your project is and add it in there. So go to the uh, marketplace. If you already have it, um, just add it from your vault. Since it's a free one, I expect most people would have to type in FPS. It's going to be this FPS weapon bundle. I already have it. So I'm going to go to my library, and I'm going to add it in from there in my uh, vault. So FPS, uh, FPS weapon bundle, add to project. Tutorial 1. Like I said, I think I had yours as Tutorial 1A. Go ahead and add that to the project. And it's going to take a little bit of time. I may fast forward through this. No, nope, we're pretty quick. Go ahead and minimize your Epic Games Launcher. And here we go. FPS Weapon Bundle's in there. It should work. If it doesn't work for you, just restart your, uh, restart your game or your uh, project and it should be fine. We're gonna go into the third person blueprint folder, open up blueprints, and this is where we're gonna go ahead and start doing things. So first thing we're gonna do is gonna right click, and we are going to go to the blueprint class, okay? And we're gonna create an actor. Now an actor, as it's described here, it says uh, that it can be placed or spawned in the world. This is basically anything almost in Unreal. So when you want to create something new, you're probably going to start with an actor. Uh, if you're C++, it's just like starting another class, only they add um, several elements in there to assist you greatly in making things. It, it makes it really, really easy. So click on your actor, okay? And this is going to be called Weapon Actual master and the reason i say weapon actual is it's going to be the weapon that's actually spawned into the person's hand and it's going to be a little bit different than the pickup that uh when your character walks over and he and he picks something up um it's going to be different than this this is this is going to be included in the pickup if that makes sense so let's go ahead and actually do the pickup so we're going to do another actor um, and we're going to call it Weapon Pickup Master. Okay? All right, go ahead and save all. Okay, so let's talk about what's going to be in our Weapon Actual. It's going to be very simple. Let's double click on it. Okay, and this, this is a blueprint, it's, it's a class, same thing. It's a container for what you are creating, okay? So what's gonna go into here is gonna be the the physical weapon, all right? And we do that over here in our components. To uh, add a component, all you do is click Add Component. 
okay? And I always mix this up. I'll probably mix it up here, but we're gonna try it. For the type of component we wanna add, it's called a skeletal mesh, okay? And you're like, what's well, a skeletal mesh? Well, it's a mesh that has bones in it, okay? It sounds a little strange at first, but with bones, all that means there's things that you can animate. So uh, if you, let's say you fire a gun and you want the uh, chamber to open and a shell to eject all, and all this stuff triggers to move, it's gonna be a skeletal mesh as opposed to a static mesh, which doesn't move around at all. It's, it, I mean, you can, you can give it physics in its own self. Like it can, it can bounce on the ground, it can do all that sort of stuff, but internal components and all that, it, it's not gonna be going on. So skeletal mesh is what we want. Um, now, if you click on it, you're gonna see all the details pop up over here. We're gonna just pick, um, let's see, let's do, yeah, the SKAR4X, and they they can't give them the real names. That's That looks to me like an AR-15 or M16, whatever you wanna say. Uh, but we'll go ahead and use this SK. AR4X as our skeletal mesh. I'm gonna try to remember that. Compile, save, file, save all. Now we're gonna come back to this. We'll add more to it later, but for this tutorial, that's, I think, all we're gonna need. Oh, one very important thing. In the class defaults, go ahead and click this button right here. Let's make sure we go ahead and make, have this replicating. I believe that's correct. We may not need it for this tutorial. We'll probably need it for later ones, but compile, save. All right, so that's the thing that's actually gonna be spawned in the character's hand, which we'll do later on. Uh, now we gotta go to the pickup, and the reason I did this first is because the pickup is gonna have this in it. So go back to your third person map. Now we're gonna go to the uh, weapon pickup master. Okay, so very important right here. So the very first thing that this pickup, it's, gotta, it's gonna have two major components in it. It's gotta have, uh, you, wanna, you wanna something visually that you can see as a, as a player, which is gonna be a mesh. And we're gonna use a st static mesh. And the reason we're gonna use a static mesh is we're gonna add physics to it. And physics are things that, like gravity, and that so that it can it can land on the ground and maybe bounce or you know whatever. So later on we can do that. If we were to use a skeletal mesh and you try to use physics, it it'll ragdoll. So if you know you play games, uh, ra ragdoll on a weapon when all the components are flopping all over the place, that would look very strange. So we're gonna head, go ahead and use a static mesh so it doesn't do a ragdoll, uh, but we still may, might want to make it bounce around if say a character gets shot and it, it drops. Um, so we're gonna wanna have that. We're also gonna wanna have um, the, the, an, a bounds, a, a volume around that object that when the character walks into, it, uh, it, it's, how, do, how, how would I say this? So, the, so that way the character and the pickup know that the character is there. It's like a sensor. Like think about it when you go to the grocery store and you walk through the sensor and the door opens. It's gonna be the same thing. This is the sensor and it's got a box that it uses. So you walk into this invisible box and now it knows you're, you're over the weapon. So let's go ahead and add that. Um, and that is gonna be, let me see, what did I use last time? Yeah, we'll use box collision. Uh, your character uses a capsule collision. It already comes included in there, and we're gonna use that later, but right now we're gonna use the box collision. And then it pops up right there. So anytime your character walks into this thing, um, we're gonna set it up so it, it sends signals so that you know it knows you're there. Um, the other thing we wanna do, now it's just, we're gonna add this to the box. So it's gonna be uh, parented to the box which means the box is pretty much in charge, if that makes sense. Uh, we're gonna add our static mesh. So, static mesh. Okay. And we can call this, um, I don't know, weapon mesh. I should have named the other one. We're gonna have to remember to go back and do that. Uh, but we'll just remember that that's weapon mesh. And then once again, you click on it over here and you'll get it to pop up over here. Now, I can't remember if they already have static meshes for this. They should. Um, so, 
what was it named in the other one? Let's go ahead and look that up. These names are throwing me off. Uh, what do we have? The Weapon Actual Master. It's called SKAR4X. All right, let's look for that. SKAR. No, it's not going to be nice to me. Let's see what it has. So basically all I'm doing is I'm going to find this, this actual mesh, by clicking on the magnifying glass. And it's there. They call it, okay, that would make sense. So the SK prefix is for skeletal mesh, and the SM prefix is for static mesh. So SMAR4X. So I'm going to try to see if it works. I'm just going to highlight this. And then I'm going to go into my weapon pickup master. I'm going to click on my weapon mesh and this little arrow over here. I hope it works. Okay, cool. It went in there just like we wanted. No problem. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to want this to sit near the bottom for right now. I think that's how I want to do it. I'm not sure. Let's go ahead and move the whole box and see how this works. No, that's not what we want. Because we're going to want this to set on the ground right. Um, we'll just leave it alone for right now. It's going to hover a little weird. I don't, want it, I don't want it to be off. Let's increase the size of this box. So our red is our X. Let's go. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just guessing it here, guys. This stuff's not really important at the moment. It's just cosmetic, really. And then we can... And all I did there is I increased the X, which is the length here. And then I'm going to drag the mesh back into this box a little bit so let's see if you right click in here it, it gives you move room around or it gives you the ability to move around so if you right click and I'm just moving around like I would a character I'm just moving around the WASD keys and you can kind of see yeah that's a little goofy let me move it back where it was this will work for now I'm not gonna get crazy about it we'll fix this up later compile save save all very important, go to your class defaults. Make sure you're replicated. REP replicates, okay? This is gonna be so that clients can see what the heck happens to this thing. Compile, save, file, save all. Okay, we've got our base setup going. Easy stuff's out of the way. Now we're gonna get into the um, more complex things and things I'm gonna have to start thinking about. Uh, let's go into our character. Actually, first, let's go ahead and drag one of those out there. So go to our, our map right here. Get into, let's see. Where did we hide all that stuff at? It's always a problem with this. It's finding where you put stuff. Okay. So the weapon pickup master. Make sure you do the pickup and not the actual because we're going to spawn that in. Uh, that'll be a coding thing. So we're going to go ahead and pick up our weapon master and we just pick it up and drag it into the world. And I'm just going to set it like this. We'll eventually mess with the settings so that we don't have to do so much manual. Uh, I want to do it so when you pick it up, dr press end, it doesn't get buried like that. So I need to move the, uh, the box and the component up. But for right now, we'll just set it in there like that. Okay, um, and then let's go into our third person character. All right. So, let's go to our viewport. Okay, so this guy, just like our box, he has a bounds volume. You see it? It's the capsule right here. All right. Um, so, really, what's going on when the character is moving around? This is the only thing that's moving around. And since all the other components are parented to it, they all follow him. So you, really, when, you, when your character's walking around, this capsule is being told to move over here, move over there, whatever. And then the character is just going along for the ride. And the animations are being played. And then it looks like him walking is causing the uh, character to move. But in reality, the capsule's already moving, and you're just playing an animation with it. That's, that's, that's the secret that's going on. So what we want to know is, is we want to know when this capsule is overlapping our pickup, okay? So we're going to just take our capsule, let's just find a nice clear spot. We're going to take our capsule, we're going to drag it out here, 
boom, drop it in here. Now this is a this represents our capsule. It's a it's a reference. All right, that's all it is. A reference to that capsule. So Unreal has been really nice in putting these functions in here that make doing things so much easier. So if you just drag off over here and type in get over. So you can do one of two things, overlapping actors or overlapping components. We're gonna see how this works. We're gonna try overlapping actors. Okay, now, th now what is this? This is a complex function. There's a lot of nuts and bolts going on in here. Um, and to see what's in there, we'd have to have Visual Studio. I have it, you probably don't, I don't know, maybe you do. You double click on it and you can go ahead and see the code in there. Right now, it's working, it's fine. We don't, we don't need to get into the, all the details of this, but just know this is not a simple variable. It's very complicated, lots of stuff going on. Um, so we're gonna drop down our class filter and think of, remember, the class filter as um, b blueprint filter. I mean, you could call it that. So what do we wanna be looking for? We wanna look for our weapon pickup master. Okay. And that's going to grab our weapon pickups and any of their children. And I'll explain what those are later because that's what we're actually going to be using. So if you're following sig signal flow, you want to get, you want to know what this is right here, what comes out of there. This is called an array, okay? And all an array is, is a collection of things. Think of like an inventory. Think of you know, a backpack that contains just, uh, like on a game where you have a backpack that contains all your stuff. That's, that's all it is, it's very simple. Now, the only thing is, in Unreal, your arrays are, um, they, it all has to be the same type of thing. You can't have a whole bunch of different things. Like in Python, you have what are called lists, and you can have all, you could have ints and bools and whatever in there. But with Unreal and their arrays, it has to be all the same thing. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the same pistol, the same rifle or whatever like that. It could just be the same, you could choose weapons, okay? And you could say all the same weapons. Well, for us, it's gonna be a, a list, uh, an array of weapon pickups. That's what's, that's what's coming out of here. That's what we told it to. So it's, and it's gonna be weapon pickups that that capsule is currently um, overlapping. So to determine what it's currently overlapping, you have to say at what time, right? Otherwise, you know, it doesn't know when to look for it. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, we're gonna give it a time and it's gonna be when we press the key E, all right? Because that's gonna be our interaction key. And there's a lot of different ways we can do it. Uh, let's go ahead and just set it up through the input. So to do that, go to your project settings, okay? And I know you may not have this open. So just go to your third person example uh, map, go to settings, project settings, and then go to your input. Okay, and this is gonna be an action mapping. So drop down your action mapping, and then press plus, and name it whatever the heck you want, okay? I'm just gonna say, you could say interact, if I can spell it. All right, and then we're gonna assign it the key, keyboard key E. And this is always fun, navigating all this junk and trying to find it, and uh, there it is right there. Okay, and you can make it whatever you want. You can do all this crazy stuff. You can add in more than one binding. So if you want to set this up for controller, have at it. I'm not doing that right now, uh, but it's there. You don't have to worry about saving it. It's already uh, it's already set. Okay, let's go back to our uh, character. All right, right click, type in what we named it, interact. Okay, you see the action event right here. That's what we want. Okay, we just set this up. So whatever key you chose, that's what's gonna happen when you, you press it, okay? All right, so now we've covered all this stuff. This has all been very Unreal uh, specific. Now what we're gonna talk about is something that all programming uses. And if you understand this concept, you've just made a major, you've, you've hit a major milestone, okay? So don't feel frustrated if at first you're like, I don't, I don't get what the hell he's doing. Don't, just relax, okay? So coming out of this array, which is a collection of things, it could be one thing, it could be no things, it could be everything. We're gonna drag out and we're gonna check, uh, we're gonna type in for each. And this is called a for each loop. And it's what it's saying is for each item in this list of things, do something. That's all it is, for each item. And 
it's nothing more complex than that. Okay? So for each item, we want to we want to go ahead and do something. All right? Um, so I think maybe right now we should kind of show you what's going on. So let's, this array element is gonna be the each item. So it's gonna go through it each time. So let me just stop talking so much and kind of show you. Uh, let's say, let's, let's do a print string. That'll make it easier for you to see what's actually happening. So print string. Okay, and we're gonna take out, this is the array element. This is one of the items in here and we're gonna plug it right into here. And it defaults to get a display name, which is another complicated uh, Unreal function, or not really complicated, but it's a function, okay? It's, it's doing numerous things, and it's getting the name of whatever the heck we're overlapping, okay? So let me put this in the loop body, okay? Let's just compile, save. Let's see if we even get it working, because you need to do that. File, save all, go back to your map. Uh, let's do... Yeah, we'll just press play, okay? So we got our guy, he's gonna go over here and he's gonna press E. Okay, you see that it went up for just a second. I may need to increase the, si the size or the time, but you press E, it pops up. Client one, weapon pickup master. All right, let's increase that time so we can actually know what's going on. Go back into your third person character, print screen, do the drop down. okay? Change this to five, five and tab, compile, save. Back to here, save all, save selected, press play. Okay, walk over here, press E. Client one, weapon pickup master, and that is what it is. So we know that we have set everything up properly. Now, um, I'm curious if this will work. So let's press escape, click on this, and I'm gonna hold alt, I'm gonna drag out like this, and we're gonna try to overlap both of them, we're gonna see if it works, press play. Okay, I'm overlapping both. Press E, there we go. Weapon Pickup Master and we Weapon Pickup Master 2. Uh, notice that. We didn't name something called Pickup Master, but it has taken upon itself to name it something else. The reason is, is because there's two. You can't have two of the same thing. In, in programming, you just can't, you can't have two of the same thing. It causes problems, right? So it gives it a new name. And this is really, really, really important to understand is that each one of these is an instance, okay? It's an instance of our weapon pickup master, okay? So here's how you need to think of blueprints and classes in general. They're cookie cutters, okay? They're, they're, some, they're cookie cutters uh, that make the cookies, and our cookies are gonna be AR-15s, okay? So the class in itself isn't really anything replicated or shown in the world. It's these these cookies, and I stole this concept from Chili, so thank you for that. Uh, he's another guy that teaches you about programming. But anyway, these, these cookies in here, it's very important to understand this because when we're casting, when we get into that, you need to understand this concept. So just just keep that in the back of your head for right now, okay? So. I've escaped out of there. Let's go back into our character. Okay. My dogs are going crazy right now. So, trying to decide how I should go about this. And this is the thing, you know, I've, I've sat this through and, I, and I've tried to... I think the easiest way to explain this, we're gonna go into, we're gonna make more cookie cutters. Okay, that way you can see how these all interact. So let me go back to my third person example map. Okay, so we talked about inheritance. So we are gonna make children <laughs> with these, these various pickups, okay? So we got our weapon actual. Let's go ahead and, and, and make the children. So what, what is a child? So basically the child has all of the things. Oh, thanks, bud. Uh, all of the things that the parent has, okay? But we can add additional customization. That's pretty much all it is. But it's all linked in a chain. So right click, this is all you do, create a child blueprint class. And we are just gonna call it um, weapon actual, that's fine. Gonna get rid of the master, that's what I'm deleting. 
Um, and then we're going to call it underscore child one. Okay. And it did something funny. So D or F2. Let's erase this D. Okay. Weapon actual child one. Now click back on your master. Don't click on this guy because then you'll make a child of him and you don't want to do that. Click on the master, right click, create a child blueprint class, and then you're going to have, I should have just copied, uh, child two, get rid of the master. So we got weapon actual child one, weapon actual child two, and then weapon actual master again, right click, create child weapon actual get rid of the master m a s t e r child 3 okay so we're going to have three different weapons go ahead and save those all save selected now it's getting confusing because everything has the same picture we're going to fix that okay uh just go ahead and right click uh, we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call it uh, the weapon actual folder Okay, so we got weapon actual child one, move here, weapon actual child two, move here, weapon actual child three, move here. Okay, and now we're going to do the same exact thing for the weapon pickup master. So, weapon pickup master, create child. No, well, this will be child one, get rid of the master. Press enter. Uh, weapon pickup master. Create child. This will be child two. Get rid of the master. And weapon pickup master. Create child. Uh, this will be child three. So we got child one, child two, child three. And then we're going to make a folder, new folder. And we're gonna call it weapon pickups. And then all we do is take our ones with our stars, control, child one, child two, child three, click, drag in there, move here, and there we go. That's a lot less confusing. We've got our weapon actual uh, and our weapon pickup, both masters. So let's go into our actuals and let's mix these up. So the first actual, it's gonna be an AR-15 or whatever the heck this thing was named. The second one, we're gonna double click. And this is what I was talking about with children customizing things. This is what this is all about. Click on the skeletal mesh and we got this SKAR4X. I'm gonna click this down. I think the next one's a grenade. Let's see what this one is. Yep, that's the grenade. I love how they name these. SKKA47. We do want that, but we want it to be the X version. And you can tell how it rotated. Well, this is just rotating along the X axis. And we wanna keep them all the same axis. It'll be easier when we're spawning in. Uh, so I spawn that in there. Compile, save, you can tell it's an AK-47, not whatever the heck they named it. I'll save all. Let's, you can go ahead, I, th I think we can close this. Close that, go back into our main map. Um, and then our weapon actual child three, double click on that, and we're gonna change it, I'm clicking the skeletal mesh here, and we're gonna change its skeletal mesh to, not the AK-47X, what do we want to do next? We can do, what is this one? It's like a submachine gun of the AK. I don't even know what that would actually be in real life, but compile, save, file, save all. You can change them to whatever you want. The only thing that's important is we've got to keep it consistent with the pickups or else you're, what you're spawning is going to be different from your pickups. So let's go do that. We'll go back to our, th nope, don't do that. Go back to our third person example map. So all of our children are set go to the pickups and let's do the same thing. So our pickups, it's got the uh, AK, uh, AR-15. We're gonna go to our child two, weapon mesh. And there are a lot more static, or yeah, static meshes and skeletal meshes. So we're gonna be, 
what did they call it? Um, SM, like AR. Is that what it was? SMAR4X? Yeah. No, that's not what we want. We want the AK. So let's do the trick we did before that made it a lot easier. Go to your third person example. Let's see. Weapon actual. Good. Double click on the actual. Open full blueprint editor. Static or the skeletal mesh. We want to find where that's at. And then we're going to choose its static mesh, which is the light blue. Remember, the static mesh doesn't have all the bones. Click on that. And then we need to find, this will be the weapon actual child 2. No, that's what we had. Weapon pickup child 2. OK, click on that. And since we have this highlighted, we should be able to do that trick. OK, weapon pickup child 2. And then we'll just click this arrow. Oh, there we go. That's this can get confusing really quick. Compile, save, save all. Go back to your third person example map. And where were we? Blueprints. Okay, we're doing the pickups. Okay, so we just need to change this third child. Double click, uh, weapon pickup child. We made that that uh, that weird submachine gun. Okay. So go back into third person example map, go to the actuals, get that submachine gun, double click it. We're gonna hit the magnifying glass so we can find where the heck we got it from. And then we're gonna look for its static mesh. Boom, right there. Highlight it, go to our weapon pickup child three, go to the weapons mesh, and simply click the arrow. Nothing simple about it, but we got it. Compile, save, file, save all. Now, let's check our work. Very important. Go back to where we got our blueprints. Okay, so for your weapon actuals, you should have an AR-15, named whatever the heck that is. Um, a, and that's weapon actual child one, weapon actual child two will look like the AK, and the weapon actual child three will look like the submachine gun on the uh, AK. Then for the pickups, it's going to have the AR 15, AK 47, and the submachine gun of the AK 47. Okay, does that make sense? All right. So make sure you got all that right, double check it, do whatever you got to do. So the pickups are going to contain the actuals. So we can get that information out of there. Okay, so let's go ahead and double click. How do we want to do this? Go to your blueprints, click on weapon pickup master. All right, did that. Now let's add a variable in here. This can be a very unique variable. Okay, and let's call it weapon actual vary for variable click this drop down weapon oh not that actual master okay so what are we doing here we're getting we're getting into some deep stuff so you know how I said you could have the bulls, which are the S nose. You can have the floats, which are the 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. You can have the ints, which are solid numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, you can have strings. You can have characters. Those, those types are variables. Well, you can also have variables that are things you've created. Uh, there are references to those things. So we want to get a reference. We want to get a reference to the class the blueprint that we created and this isn't usually done but this is a unique situation where we're embedding um, a class within a class a blueprint within a blueprint and there's no other w real way to do this efficiently than to do it this way uh, I mean there's other ways to do it but I think this is the most efficient way so we're gonna go into our weapon actual master click over and we don't want the object reference that that would be if we wanted a specific instance remember when we had multiple things in the world and there were different instances that's not this we want a reference to the whole class okay because that's what we're gonna spawn into the world 
Unreal spawns in by class, not by uh, not by individual components like a mesh or something like that. It'll do the whole. It's going to spawn in the whole class. So we're going to go ahead and spawn in our class reference, or I'm sorry, we're going to select our class reference. Okay. So weapon actual variable, and this is in our pickup master. So that means all the children now have a variation of this weapon actual variable. And with the children, we're gonna change them, okay? So let's go ahead and compile, save, file, save all. Okay, click this X, make sure you're all nice and cleared out. Okay, I'm gonna double check something making sure we're replicated, great. Okay, so when you click on, after you compiled and saved, make sure you do that. When you click on weapon actual variable, you're gonna be able to see this default value, okay? We're gonna set it to weapon actual master. And we're never really gonna use the masters in the game. We only use the children. So for right now, I'm setting it to weapon actual master. So that means, file, save all. When you pick up this weapon, you're gonna be able to access, access this variable, okay? It'll make more sense as we move along. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stop talking so much and get going. So let's go to our third person example. Okay, we did our pickup master. Let's go to the actual children, and I'm gonna show you something. So we'll go into the weapon pickups. I should have named them like weapon pickups children, but double click on this. We had our weapon pickup ch uh, child one, two, and three. So let's look at what's going on inside of our child one. Okay, so to see that variable, it should be in class defaults. There it is. Weapon actual variable, and it's defaulted to the weapon actual master. And remember, since, this is, since we are using the children in the game, that's how we wanna do this, we wanna go ahead and select a child for the child, watch. Weapon actual child one, okay? So think about this, compile, save, this is, this is so important. You have your, you have your pickup child one, is gonna contain the actual child one, okay? And we're gonna do that for all of the others and eventually you're gonna see why, but what you need to understand is that the pickup, the pickup child one is containing the actual child one. The pickup child two is containing the actual child two, okay? And I'm gonna to explain to you why you had to embed a class in, into a class, but I don't wanna get ahead of myself. Let's go back to the third person, ex oh, sorry. Go back to the map here, go to our weapon pickup child two. All right, weapon pickup child, there should be the, let's go to our class defaults, weapon actual variable. Since this is the child two, we wanna go ahead and pick up the weapon actual child two. All right, compile, save that. Third person example map, you guessed it. We're gonna go to the pickup child three, go to our class defaults and pick weapon actual child three. All right, compile, save, file, save all. All right, now let's go ahead and we're gonna have to clear out some room. So let's X out of some of these variables. master, weapon actual. Let's keep our third person character open, okay? And that's where we are. So I'm back in this guy. Click him, edit blueprint, open blueprint editor. Okay. So let's drag, let's drag some of our pickups into the world. So let's delete the masters. Remember, we're not actually gonna use the masters in the game. So delete that. I don't know what I just deleted there. Let me control Z that, that didn't look right. Oh, that's my, that's a star location. Okay. And delete that. Now, you do not wanna drag in actuals into the world. We're spawning those. You wanna drag in pickups, okay? So weapon 
pick up child one, weapon pick up child two, and weapon pick up child three, okay? Now we wanna make sure these are all registering properly, so I'm gonna press play. I'm gonna walk in there with my dude and press E. Weapon pick up child three, that's correct. Weapon pick up child two, that's correct. And weapon pick up child one, that's correct. And you notice I'm stepping up all over the gun and doing all sorts of weird stuff. That's all cosmetic, we'll fix that stuff later. That's easy crap, we, you, you can even figure it out, but I'll, I'll go through it with you. So it's got your child two, everything's being registered properly, good. Escape out of there, go back into our third person character. Okay, so now what we need to do, this is critical, is when we walk over and we press E, we need to access the pickup class. We need, to, we need to get information out of that class. And that information is going to be uh, the actual information, uh, the, the, pick, the, uh, the weapon actual information. But first things first, let's just get access to the initial class, which is the pickup class, so we can get information out of it. How we do that is we got to cast into it, okay? So let me just get it going here so you can have a visual representation. So out of this uh, array, we are going to cast to weapon pickup master, all right? And connect our loop body into there. So now that we've casted, we have access to all the information within the pickup master. And guess what's in there that we need? I just said it. Weapon, get weapon actual, actual vary. Okay, that is the variable that we use to set all the different weapon types, okay? That's the information that we needed to get out of there. And that's the information that's gonna be spawned later on, okay? Uh, very uh, important concept to get there. So, where do we go from here? I'm gonna bring up my notes because it gets even more complicated. So, let me see, I have a version over here. I'm gonna try and do it without closing yours is it still open okay good okay so what we need to do is when we walk over this and we press e we're going to get this information and we want to store it into the character we want him to pick up the data and hold it and carry it along with him and he's going to carry it inside of his character blueprint so how do we do that well, we have to have a thing that holds things, which I told you earlier is an array. So we're gonna make our own array, all right? Now an array can be of any variable type, all right? So press variable, and we're gonna call it our weapon inventory. All right, just double checking, okay. Weapon inventory, and what type is it going to be? It's going to be our weapon actual master class reference. I believe I have that right. Com compile, save, file, save all. Now right now it's just a simple variable. We want to make it a collection of those variables. So to make, and that's called an array. To make it the collection, to make it a list as Python would have it, uh, but we're doing C++, click on this little guy right here, and then it gives you the thing that looks like a checkerboard and it says array. Click on that, all right? Now we have an array. Compile, save. I do that habitually. I'm just gonna stop saying it. You, you know what I'm doing. Uh, and we need to store this data. So to do that, Click on your array, think of this as a, uh, a backpack, and we need to get it. Okay, now nothing is in here. We could manually come in here, press plus, plus, plus buttons, and manually add it in 
uh, as we're coding it, let's say we want him to already come with maybe a knife or a pistol or something like that, but we don't right now. We can add that in later, no problem. Right now we want it nice and empty. What we wanna do to this array is we wanna add to it. So when you walk over a weapon, you press the E key, you pick something up, it goes into your backpack. But you don't wanna, let's say you walk over a rifle that you've already picked up, you don't wanna have two of the same rifles in there. You might wanna take some ammunition out of it or do something like that, but you don't wanna have like 50. If you, if you come across the same rifle over and over again, you don't wanna have 50 of the same rifle. Unless you're playing uh, like the, uh, the old New Vegas Fallout where you could have a bunch of rifles and then use those rifles to repair other rifles, which was awesome, I loved that game. But that's not what we're gonna do right now. You can do it on your own or maybe later on we can go and add that in. But we're gonna keep it simple. We only wanna add a weapon to our inventory if we don't have it. So there's a unique um, function that's uh, built into the whole array structure and it's called add unique. Notice there's add and there's add unique. Add unique is unique. We don't have it yet. That's all that means, all right? So right away, it's coming up and it's asking us uh, to select a class. It wants to know, well, what do, you wanna, what do you wanna add? Well, we wanna add this data that's coming from the thing our character's overlapping, which is our pickup. And our pickup contains weapon actual information, which is what we're gonna wanna spawn in our hand when we pick it up. So to do that, simply drag over and there. So that's what we're doing, okay? So let's recap a little bit. So our character, uh, we press the interact key. We're getting all the overlapped actors, which is anything our uh, capsule is overlapping. For each thing that it's overlapping, it could be overlapping multiple things, it's only gonna add the unique things and what it's going to add out of there is going to be the weapon actual variable data okay so here's something interesting um right here what it does is it spits out a value oh. somebody bumped my mic let me fix this real quick okay it spits out a value now, I'm not sure, let's see. It, it spits out the index of the newly added uh, item. You can, or index none. So this is kinda, this is, see this is the tricky crap that you'll spend forever messing with. If you didn't have somebody sit here and tell you, you you'd go crazy. So the, it adds the index of the newly added item or index none of the item if it's already present in the array. Well, in, it doesn't tell you the index none is represented by a negative one. I mean, you're just supposed to know that, which is, I hate that sort of, you're just supposed to know it's stuff. So how we do that to detect that is we're going to drag off here and type in uh, equals, which is two equal signs in C++, equals integer negative one. Now, why do we want to know that? Why do we want to know? Because we want to know if it didn't add anything. It's very important because what we're going to do is we're going to do, uh, we're going to make a decision because it's spitting out a bool. Remember red is a bool, yes or no? So we want to know, we want to make a decision based off this. So we're going to press B as in boy and left click. It opens up what's called a branch. You could also right click, type in branch and this will pop up, but we're not going to do that. We're going to just delete. So what we want to know Okay, you type in branch, so and then connect this up here. So it's basically gonna say, did we or didn't we add something? If negative one happens, that means it's gonna spit out a true, which means it didn't spit, it, it did not add anything. So let's make note of that. I'm, I'm doing a print screen. I'm gonna say negative one was hit, so we're gonna to go to true, and we're gonna say did not add to inventory. These all get deleted later on. And, and when you mix it down in, in Unreal, when you, when you uh, I forget what the, cook it, bake it, whatever the heck they call it. When you send your final product, these print strings obviously aren't gonna be coming up, okay? So this is for us, we, these are important. Uh, did not add to inventory. 
If, however, it did add to the inventory, it, th this negative one is going to actually, it's going to spit out an actual number. And in that case, we want to do something unique. We want to destroy the item. So when we pick it up, it's not on the ground anymore. Okay. So let's do that. So let's see. Because it, it, it would be silly. It'd be like a, a crate with with an infinite number of rifles if you did not destroy it it would always be there so you want to destroy the pickup when you go over it um so the problem with this is if you were playing a single single player game um and <laughs> here okay let me back up if you did it just like this the target is self and we are right now we are in the third person character so if you did it like this when you picked up a character your character would just pff, gone bye bye if you were doing a single player game, what you would do is you would connect up this array element, which is what your what your character's over right now, what he is what he his capsule is overlapping. You would drag it into here and you would connect it. And then if you if you uh, added it to your inventory, it would then be destroyed. But we're in a multiplayer game and and you can't do that. It, it won't show up. The only person that this will work for compile save. Just so you know, I'm not full of crap i'm going to show you what i'm talking about press play uh let's go over here okay and we we're doing it uh simulating that you're doing like a uh a non-dedicated session okay so he here's your server i'm actually just playing as a server i walk over here i press e boom it's gone boom it's gone great that's what we want awesome and you're like yeah i did it but then you switch over here and you go over to your client and let's see what happens Oh, uh, and we're getting our message. Did not add to inventory, and it's not replicating that it's being picked up. Okay, this is this is this is where the multiplayer programming aspect comes into it. Escape. You you need to run that on the server. That's that's long story, long story just to get to that. So what do we do? We do what we always freaking do. We uh, we create a custom event. Right click, add custom event. We're gonna say. Uh, destroy pickup okay let's make sure that it's run on server let's make sure that it's reliable you have to have all these things compile save uh, save all the other thing that it's gonna need this thing is gonna need it's gonna need to accept into it the pickup or else we can't destroy it you you, you couldn't get a reference to say your your thing you're trying to destroy and then just tag it on here it's 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 got to be the the instance uh so to do that we just add a new parameter okay and what's it going to take so we, we could we could we could do this a bunch of different ways let me see how i did it before i think i just made it a uh, general yeah i just made it an actor so we're going to talk about hierarchy a little bit here so I could specify and say this thing right now it's set to bullying that it's only going to pick take weapon pickup masters, but in Unreal usually when it's performing actions spitting out uh, spitting out uh, variables and that it, it it just defaults to actor and actor is up the food chain so it works and and when we talk about hierarchy in just a second you'll understand what I mean so what we're going to do is we're going to make this thing accept an actor which is what we originally had it was something that is spawned into the world right so just drop this down change it to actor and then this time since we're talking about a specific actor we want to destroy we want to destroy if we destroyed the whole class it'd be like destroying the whole damn cookie cutter and we don't want to do that we just want to destroy that specific instance that pickup that we're over at the time so take object reference click that and we're going to name it. You could say uh, pick up to be destroyed like that. Okay. And remember, pile save. Remember, when we make one of these, it then makes um, a, a little node that we can call. So let's get rid of this destroyed actor. Let's just break it. Break link. Break link. Let's just move it over here. What we want to do is our own thing that we just made destroy pickup there it is we just made this so pick up to be destroyed that's what that hole is right there this target just so you know it's saying it's being called on itself 
most of the time that's it's it's fine that's unless you're calling a function from a different class it's the only time you need to mess with that right now we're not going to mess with that remember when we tried to do, i told you you would destroy yourself if you had this destroy actor on self i mean that that's an instance where we're, we're you know going into another class and and trying to affect it but here we want to call this function on ourselves so just leave that it's defaulted to self now the pickup to be destroyed remember and this for each loop it's going through each pickup that you're over. So that's what we wanna have. So just drag this in here. That's the pickup that's to be destroyed. It's only gonna get destroyed if the signal flow, remember, which is the white, actually gets there. So it doesn't always happen. Then from here, and you can even see the signal, watch this, double click, and it boom, it, goes, it knows that it needs to go over here. Then it's gonna go into your destroy actor. Once again, the pickup to destroyed you don't want to destroy yourself, dude. You want to destroy the pickup. And then compile, save, file, save all, press play. Okay. And that was the client. Did you see that? Watch this. Oh, it disappeared. Perfect. And it's gone. Look at that. Okay, let's press escape. Let's do this again. Let's windows left click on this okay here's our client shift f1 go over to the server what's now i'm just getting the server over here i'm giving him a good view of the show shift f1 go back to our client we're back on our client now watch our client let's see what he does oh and it goes away that's what we wanted oh and it's replicated beautiful let's try it again and that's great so you've destroyed items but you don't uh, okay now where are they they're in our inventory so on our next video I'm going to get us uh, showing how to spawn things. But before we do that, I want to know what's actually in the inventory. Well, there's a way to do that. So we have all this stuff going on, which we'll eventually put into a nice tidy function. But we're going to do like a, a makeshift function to check our inventory. So to do that, just right click and type in keyboard. Okay. And if you scroll up, you'll see all the different ones. Just pick Q. So you'll see some people actually program their games like this. Don't, don't do this. This, this is for testing purposes. Okay. You, you, you've hard coded the Q key, which can never be changed by anybody. And if you were doing button mapping or anything like that, you wouldn't want to do it like this. Can you shut that? Can you shut that door for me? So anyway, what you want to do is you want to check this inventory. So to do that, uh, just bring out our weapon inventory you want to get it and we're going to go through that for each loop again because we want to know what's in each item within the inventory so we're going to say pressed we're going to run off of there we're going to go print screen okay i meant to say for each loop but we're going to have to have that anyway so just drag off of here for each loop Okay, pressed, hits in here, loop body, goes over here, array element, it's going to go in here. Oh, and it says it doesn't like you. I don't want to do this. So we got to find a workaround. Let's see if we can figure out something here. Can I do this? No. Why won't you work? Hmm. This is this is what programming is, man. It's figuring it out. Sometimes in front of who knows how many people. So let's try get display name. Ah, there we go. Look what it's returning. So we're getting a reference to our class. It's returning out a string. And guess what we can do with strings? We can freaking print them. Okay. So right click, print string. Run this string into here, and then boom. Okay. So what this is doing is it's, you're pressing Q, it's going for each item in the inventory, come out of here and print string. So if we have three items in our inventory, you press Q, it goes, okay, weapon zero in the inventory, do, 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 print string, back to here. It's doing a loop. Uh, item one in the inventory, uh, da, 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 get display name, print string, and then item three in the inventory. Remember, we start counting from zero. And then it prints it out. So let's actually see it in action. It's Q, compile, save. Back to your third person example map. 
And you walk over. Now we have one item, so I'm going to press Q. Oh, I, pre I bumped it twice. Weapon actual child one. Okay, now I pressed it once, and I got two items. I got child one and child two. I keep, I keep clicking it because I didn't set my timer long enough, but you see what I'm doing. And then I come over here. I click, click it again. I should have three when I press Q. I'm going to press Q. Here we go. Three items, child one, two, and three. So let me uh, get that lasting a little bit longer so we can see what we're doing. Let's make this seven. Okay, compile, save. Go on to play. Okay, picked it up, press Q. Child, one item, we have one item. So I'm gonna just pick them all three up. And then every time I press Q, I'm getting three items. It means I have three items in my backpack. That's what I want. Now, remember earlier when we, I'm going back to my map here, and we had multiple guys. Um, so how to do that, how to make more, boom, I'm doing this. I'm going to move this, the guy out of the way. That's just a thing that where we spawn from. So I'm going to make two of everything. So move this over here. Uh, what is this? Sorry, AK. I don't know. Press alt and then drag. Okay. And drag it over. And I take this one, drag it over. All right. Slide it over, slide it over like this and slide it over like this. Okay. So I press play. All right. Now, what do you think is going to happen? So let's try it. Pick up the AR-15. Ooh, I got an AR-15. Oh, I got an AK-47. I, I want two AR-15s. Uh-uh. Not allowed. Why? Because we did add unique. We don't want to have multiple ones. So I can keep clean there. It's going to keep telling us, did not add to inventory, because you already have one, idiot. So press Q to see what you have. And you have the two actual weapons that you picked up. Okay. And that's what you want. All right. So let's let's test this on a dedicated system. Okay. So both of these are clients. And this is this can always be messy. I mean, you can do all this work and shift F1 and it won't work. Oh, and it flew away. I hate that. Shift F1. Let me bring them back. Blurry. Windows left key. Right. Okay. So client two. Here he goes, let's see. Oh, and it worked. It worked again. Beautiful. Leave these alone, perfect. Shift F1, client. Oh, that's beautiful. It worked, I can't believe it. I, it probably didn't record me doing all this crap. But anyway, there we go. So I said that we'd uh, discuss um, hierarchy and that sort of thing. I think I might save that for another video. Um, I had it up here. I'll just do a real, just very brief. So basically your, your character children, you added to the hierarchy when you made a child of each of your different, uh, remember how you, your pickup was an actor? And then, well, when you created that blueprint, you made a child of the actor class called uh, uh, Weapon Master. And then you made a child of that called the Weapon Child One, okay? Well, Unreal's, uh, the Unreal Engine is built on that. You know, it starts on an actor and a child of that, um, if you're looking on your screen here, um, is a pawn. Uh, your your character, the actual character, is a child of a pawn. And then it just, it just keeps going down this list. This is why uh, most functions will come out, uh, like let's say a get, get player character, which is when you want to get a reference to yourself, it's going to spit out an actor. Well, to get a reference to all the variables in your character, that's why you have to cast. You have to cast it down to these these other elements. And let me see if I can show you real quick. Where is he? Yeah, this guy. Um, if you were to find find your freaking character, I'm click on him real quick. Go over here, open Blueprint Editor. If you look in the upper right hand corner, it's telling you your parent class's character. If I were to click on this right now, it would open up a bunch of C++ code and it wouldn't do us any good uh, unless you know C++, which is an advantage. Uh, you click on this and then it would, it would show you all the code there and then you could trace that and it would it go up the food chain all the way to, uh, uh, all, all the way back. Okay, so this is a lot of stuff we covered. Uh, don't worry. Uh, we'll eventually go back over it, but you do need to worry that this, this, this is critical information. This, this is what everything, and, and especially on how Unreal Engine works, it, it's these concepts. It's inheritance. It's understanding casting. 
I don't know how many times um, c- casting can be very difficult because you're constantly trying to figure out what should go in the object node. Um, I'm trying to think, where did I put that? So like, if you look at our character, uh, like right here, you'll get to this point, you'll be like, man, I, I need to access my weapon pickup master. You'll know that, you'll, but you, this object won't be connected and you'll be like, how do I get a reference to that instance, that specific one? Because without this connected, it doesn't know what frick, which one. It, it, it doesn't know what, what pickup do I need? I don't know. All I know is you want to access the class that contains weapons. I don't know which one you're hovering over right now. So it'll throw up an error. It'll be like, nah, uh nah, I don't know which one you're talking about. So the only way that it's going to know is if you tell it which object. And if you know anything about C++, it's an object-oriented programming language. I mean, that's, that's, that's what it's all about is the object. You have to know specifically. And another word for, for object um, that will be used is instance. Okay, so it needs to know which object slash instance you're talking about, and that's casting. And there's a million different ways to get it, but it can sometimes be the big puzzle can be how can I get that object? Uh, let's say like you're in, let's say you were in the, okay, like for example, say you're in the pickup itself. So let's let's go into the uh, open blueprint. Um, okay, I'm in the web. I'm in the child. Let's go to the parent right here. Okay, I'm in the pickup master. Let's say you were in this pickup um, and it wanted to know like what, what character is overlapping it, right? Where, I mean, where would you go? How would you be able to tell what character is, is overlapping that box? Okay, and you were in a multiplayer game. It could be, there's a couple different ways you could do it. Uh, how I would want to do it is I would take this box, I would click on it, and I would say uh, like on... on uh, I could say on component begin overlap, okay? And when I said on component begin overlap, I was talking about this box, which is what we initially made. And then I would say the uh, other actor, which is the overlapped actor, and then I would cast to mark third person character. I would do something like this, and then I would say print string. Um, and then I might try to connect into there. And so we should get a little message that pops up. We're gonna change its color to this cool color here. Compile, save, and I'm just, <laughs> hope I didn't just screw all that up, but let's check it out. Yeah, okay, see, we're getting all that purple and stuff. So what the heck did I just do? I supplied it, I supplied it with the, the object. That's how it knew, because you overlapped. Unreal has us on. You, you, own uh, functions that can help too, like get player character, um, which is a function that'll return. If you're on a multiplayer game, get player character zero is always going to be your character. It can get more complicated though when you're dealing with, uh, you know, uh, with multiple players, let's say on the same, like if you're doing a split screen or something like that, that can get confusing. So you you really, and then from here, it's gonna, it spits out an actor. Like I told you, you know how it spits out an actor. So then you would have to cast into your cast mark third person character, and then you would be able to access all the elements in there. Anyway, I'm getting away, I'm getting, I'm going off on a tangent. I could do that forever. So stay tuned. We're gonna be doing a whole lot more uh, and get this ingrained into your system. This is super, super, super critical. Um, but I think I covered all that I have time for today. So stick around. I'll see you next time.